Hi, welcome to our team presentation for CIT 260, where our team is Lucas Nichols, Susan Pei, and Christina Ploche. And as we work together as a team, we've really enjoyed working together. We followed the seven steps to design and develop the methods we uh, used in our, in our game. In the following slides, you will see the process we went through to, together to develop the code for calc eaten by rats. First thing we um, need to do in the development process is define the problem. And this is pretty, we just, all we have to do is write a simple narrative of the problem to be solved. Next, we need to create a test matrix. And you set up test cases that would be valid, invalid, and at the boundary of valid. The boundary cases should be the first and last examples that would return a valid response. In the case above, that's 100 and zero. Third, outline the solution. Next, you write an algorithm or pseudocode. This looks similar to the statements you will write later. Fourth, test the algorithm. This is like a desk check to make sure that your algorithm will work properly. Fifth, translate to code. After the previous steps are complete, it's time to jump into NetBeans and translate that pseudocode into real code. Copy the pseudocode here and it makes for great comments that you can use as an outline to write your code. Sixth, run the test cases. Once your code is written, you can run the test cases and make sure it all works. Seventh, now that our code is running with no errors, it's time to deploy it to the repository. Make sure to first commit your changes at a relevant note because that will help you track your work later. Then you can push it to the remote repository to, co to collaborate with the rest of your team. And now we're going to do the individual portions, and I'm Christina. And we're, I'm going to start by talking about the if statement. The first thing that a method should always do is check for invalid input values. A simple if statement wor works really well, as you can see in my feed people code. The basic format is if, condition, and then the statements inside curly brackets. The condition is an expression that must evaluate to a Boolean true or false value. The block of statements after the condition only execute when the condition evaluates to true. Otherwise, the block is ignored and control moves to the next statement after the block. The first if statement checks to make sure that the wheat to feed people is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, then the return value is number one, negative one, which indicates an invalid value. The second if statement checks to make sure that wheat to feed does not exceed the wheat in storage. If it is greater, then again, the method returns a negative one. Another example of a, selection is of a selection statement is a switch statement. I used this in the help menu view code that I wrote. Switch enables the program to select among several alternatives. Nested if statements will also work for this, but a switch is more efficient. This is how it works. The value of an expression is tested against each case. When the program finds a match, then it performs the actions indicated in the statement and stops looking for another match. You can see how this works in, in my code. If the user enters the number one, then the program executes view goals method, which displays the goals of the game. If the user enters the number five, then the program goes through each case and looks for a match. Once it gets to the number five, the match is recognized and it executes the view list help method. The break command tells the program to stop processing any code after the match is achieved. For the test code, there's a code block for each case in the matrix. My test matrix had five cases, one valid, two invalid, and two boundary cases. The first and second lines. The first line uh, in my test case says is a system out print line. This means if the test is successful, it will output the text feed people test one in the console. The second line references the variable we to feed. This variable was created in the feed people method in the crop control class. Let's go back and take a look at that. You can see that the we to feed in the red box was declared as an integer value within the parentheses part of that method. We to feed is the variable that will be used to hold the user's input for the amount of wheat they want to use to feed the people. Now let's go back and look at our test code. Let's look at the third and fourth lines with the blue and orange arrows. And the line with the blue arrow calls the crop data class. We know it is the class because it starts with a capital letter. Then we create a new variable called the food, which will be used to hold the new instance of the crop data class. The line with the orange arrow takes the variable the food, adds a period to it, and uses the set wheat and store method. You'll notice that the number 3000 is used in parentheses. This is the number specified for the wheat and store in the test matrix. Now for the last three lines with the purple, pink, and green arrows. In the fifth and sixth lines, you see that we created two more integer variables, X, exp result and result. Exp result on the purple line is set to 2900 because that's what we expect the result of our calculation to be according to our test cases. The result variable calls the crop control class dot feed people method and passes the parameters of wheat to feed and the food into that method. Lastly, the asserts equals line passes the expected result and the, and the result into the function to see if they match. If they match, then the system outputs the phrase as seen on line one. If they don't match, the code will error. 
the rest of the tests follow the same pattern except for two things. The data no long, types no longer need to be declared for the variables, as you can see by the red boxes in my screenshots. In test one, they contain the int data type. In test two, they aren't there. Uh, and secondly, the new instance of the crop data object, as seen in the blue arrow in my screenshot, does not need to be declared again in each test. The declaration in the first test is sufficient. Thanks for listening to my explanation. Now I will turn the time over to Susan to explain her code. Thanks, Christina. Hi, I'm Susan. I'm going to start off by talking about the switch. This is the switch block that I created for the game view menu, game menu view class. When the user enters a number, the switch will run the code for that number. So if the user selects number one, view the map, it will run view map, which is defined below the switch. Right now, the view map method will simply print out a line, but eventually selecting number one will actually display the map. The switch will execute all statements that follow the user's inputted number until it reaches a break or until it comes to the end of the switch. So break is an important part of my switch and I have it in each case option. The same is true for each of the five menu options that I've created. In the test matrix, we'll move on to my byland method. I created a test matrix to give me a good idea of what behaviors to expect from the byland code that I was about to write. The first column is a valid purchase of land and the expected return value is 140 acres of land. If you purchase 140 acres of land, you will expect to have a return value of 140 acres of land. The second column is an invalid purchase using a negative number, which would return an error code. The third purchase is made with more wheat than is available and also returns an error code. The last two columns show the maximum and minimum valid purchases possible to test the boundaries of the code. Once this matrix was created and the math was validated, I then created the pseudocode and from there wrote the actual algorithm. Once the algorithm was written, I needed to make sure it would work as expected. Using the NetBeans testing system, I put my code through the ringer. For each column in the matrix, I wrote a section of code specifically for that column. Variables were assigned values to reflect the values in the matrix. The expected result was added so that NetBeans could compare it to the actual results of the test. If the expected result did not match the actual result, I had to go back and look at the code or the test matrix to try to explain how I got that error. By testi the testing cleared up several unanticipated problems in my method, and I was able to add byland to the GitHub repository with confidence that it would work as it was needed. Now for our group project, the group portion, I'm talking about the scope and lifespan of a variable. The lifespan of a variable defines when it can be used. When the code is executed and it comes to a variable, that variable is instantly given a location and is allocated to space and memory. That's when the variable's lifespan begins, when it is first read. A variable's life ends when the code execution reaches the end of the block that it's defined in. The memory of the variable that the variable was using is then freed and the variable's lifespan ends. So when crop control has been fully read and executed, the variable's random land base and land range will no longer be needed and that memory that was allocated to them is freed and their lifespan ends. The, the scope of a variable is defined, defines where it can be used. Using the crop control class we built as a team, I can explain this idea. I've highlighted the class and method names in purple and the variable names are in red. There are three, three variables in the crop control class, random, land base, and land range. These variables will be available to every method placed within this class. Next in the crop control class, my team created a method block called calc land cost. It has its own variable called land price. Calc land cost can access the variables random, land base, and land range, even though they are defined outside of its own method block because calc land cost is contained within crop control, land price, random land, random, land base, and land range are all within its own scope. Next, in the crop control class, my team created a method block called calc eaten by rats. Calc eaten by rats can also access the variables random, land base, and land range if they are needed. This is possible because calc eaten by rats is contained within the crop control class, just like calc land cost is but it cannot access the variable land price in the calc land cost method block. That block is outside of calc eaten by rats scope. In the same way, calc land cost cannot access the variables wheat or offering because calc eaten by rats is outside of its scope. Thank you for listening. Now we'll try and turn the time over to Lucas.